Over the last year, I've seen a lot of mistakes in my Photoshop journey. I've spent countless hours watching tutorials, studying different techniques and practicing every single day in order to improve my skills, but it hasn't always been easy. In the beginning, I struggled to understand even the most basic concepts of Photoshop. My images were often overexposed, underexposed or just wrong in every way possible. I felt frustrated and discouraged, wondering if I would ever be able to create the stunning visuals I had seen in others' work. Reflecting on my journey, I realized that there were certain mistakes that I made multiple times which slowed down my progress in photo manipulation. So I decided to make a list of 10 mistakes that I came across and how to fix them, this way maybe you can learn something without wasting that much time. Mistake number 1. Not spending enough time searching for stock images. I think this is one of the most common mistakes that I've seen. I know it's extremely easy to go and search for some nice images and in just about 1 or 2 minutes you are done, then you just drag them into Photoshop, but you have to keep in mind a few aspects such as perspective and light. You need to make sure that they sort of match to each other, this way you will save a lot of time. Imagine how long will it take to remove any highlight that doesn't match with your idea and then paint back the correct one, not even talking about losing quality because you have to crop and paste or if you use the content over fill, this will make you lose a lot of details from the original version. Usually it takes a lot of time to find the right stock assets, I myself struggle with that, I have to spend quite some time before starting the actual composition in Photoshop, maybe hours, so it is a long process but in the end it makes a huge difference, not only by saving a lot of time but also also the quality of your final image will be better. This takes me to mistake number 2 which is using low quality photos. Again, I've seen a lot of compositions in which the images used are directly downloaded from Google. With this approach there are two major problems. The first one is working with a low resolution asset. In this case, even if it is the same photo, you can clearly see the difference. The one in the right is downloaded from a free stock website with high resolution, while the left one is downloaded from Google. Not going for high quality images will ruin your entire work, no matter how many effects you apply, how you place it, how you use it, it's just a no. The second issue is that you may encounter problems with licenses and you might not be able to use them in your artworks, not even talking about selling your final result. That's why I always use high quality and licensed stock images from paid and free websites. My choice for the paid website is Envato Elements, personally is my go-to place, but if you don't want to spend money, there are some great free alternatives that you can use, such as Unsplash, Pexels, Pixabay and even DeviantArt, but pay attention here because you might need to check out the description in order to be able to use them. Of course, these are not all the websites that you can get images from, but I can only recommend you something that I use and I know about. Mistake number 3. Not using smart objects. I cannot stress enough about this one as it is something that I made earlier when I was beginning in photo manipulation. Luckily for me I did this when I was watching tutorials and didn't post on social media but it is still a very important thing to do. The idea is that if you resize or warp anything and the layer is rasterized it will instantly destroy the resolution of your image which will make it look horrible and on top of that you can even go back you have to undo everything. Let's say that you have made an image smaller, made the highlights, shadows, everything, place it somewhere in the composition and after 5 minutes you want to make it just a tiny bit bigger in order to use it in a different way, you just can't because it is completely ruined. So the best thing to do is to keep smart objects on pretty much every layer as they hold the resolution better, you can even hide and change layer styles and it will also make the image non-destructible. Mistake number 4. Not looking for inspiration. If you don't seek out inspiration, you may end up creating compositions that are similar to what you have already done or that lack the originality that comes from exploring new ideas. You may also miss out on the opportunity to learn from the mistakes and the success of others which can help you improve your own flow. Also looking for inspiration can help you stay motivated and engaged in your journey. It can be very easy to get stuck in a rut or to feel uninspired when you are working on a project, but by seeking out new ideas and approaches, you can keep your artworks fresh and exciting. So please make sure to spend some time on this step, personally I go and scroll for about 30 minutes on Instagram and if I don't find something interesting, I'll just move to DeviantArt and do the same thing. It doesn't mean that I always spend one hour in just searching for inspiration, sometimes I find in the first 10 minutes a good reference and sometimes it takes me maybe 40 minutes. Mistake number 5. Starting way too early with shadows, highlights and color grading. If you focus too much on these aspects, you may end up wasting time and effort on adjustments that might not be necessary or may need to be redone later. 
When starting a photo manipulation project, it is important to first focus on the overall composition and concept. This means establishing the main elements of the image, such as the subject, background and overall visual theme. Once these elements have been established, you can then start to make adjustments to the shadows, highlights and color grading in order to enhance the overall mood and atmosphere of the image. What you can do is to have all your images inside Photoshop, crop them, find the right angle, place them and just work with the exposure, this way you can visualize your entire composition and only after that start blending them all together. Mistake number 6. Going for extremely complicated compositions right away. Yes, sometimes I am part of this category and I know I'm still working on that. Going for complicated compositions right away in Photoshop can be a mistake because you can make the process more difficult and time consuming than necessary. If you start with complex composition before mastering the basics, you may end up feeling overwhelmed and frustrated, which can lead to discouragement and burnout. You may also find that you need to spend more time on each element of the composition to ensure that they all work together the way they should be. A better thing to do would be to take all of that time that you should have put into a complex composition and work on mastering the essentials. Maybe use a simple subject and a background, blend the layers together well, add some highlights and shadows and as you improve you can use more assets. Mistake number 7. Not spending enough time on creating one composition. When I first started using Photoshop, I had a desire to create more and I didn't pay attention to details which led to bad results, I couldn't grow as I wanted and my final images had zero emotional impact which means that there was no story. It is important to take your time when creating a composition and focus on the important aspects of the image allowing yourself to fully explore and experiment with different techniques. What I like to do sometimes when I'm working on a project, I intentionally leave it unfinished for the next day because when I come back I have a fresh mind and excluding the fact that I see a lot of technical issues, I have new ideas that I can implement. Mistake number 8. Making extremely harsh highlights. Well, this is something that I see everywhere. It took me quite some time in order to realize how the light actually works. In the beginning, I didn't know this either, but in order to make accurate and nice highlights, you need to study others and practice. When creating highlights, it is important to make sure that they are natural looking. This means that they should blend seamlessly with the rest of the image and not appear too bright. So please make sure to avoid it. I know a lot of people go for this type of harsh highlights and they can make an image look artificial and incorrect, which can be a turn off for the viewer. Besides studying other work and seeing how they approach this step, just try not to overdo things and I'm not talking only about highlights, just in general. Try to keep everything clean all around the image. Mistake number 9. Having only one source of light. One of the key advantages of using multiple light sources is that they can help you to create a more realistic looking image. In the real world, objects are rarely illuminated just by one light source. There are usually multiple ones coming from different angles and directions. By replicating this in your composition, you can create a more convincing image that looks like it could actually exist in the real world. Experimenting with different types of light and seeing how they affect your image can be a great way to explore your creativity and develop your skills as an artist. And last but not least, mistake number 10, not practicing enough. If you are not practicing enough, you can slow down your ability to create high quality images and limit your creative potential. Like any skill, photo manipulation requires practice and experimentation and if you are serious about it, you can become one of the best in this field. The more you practice, the more familiar you become with the tools and techniques and you will be able to achieve your creative vision. Remember to keep practicing, seeking new ideas and experimenting with different techniques to continue improving your skills. And that's all for today. If you made this far into the video, you are amazing. Hit the like button if you like it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you in my next video.